But on the Huangpu River, the Japanese flagship, Izumo, welcomes Vice Admiral Kiyoshi Hasegawa, the Japanese naval commander in the Shanghai fighting zone. With the Japanese foothold west and northwest of Shanghai made secure, danger to the Izumo is not so great. And so back... ...baiting armada, Hangkow bound. There is no let up in the relentless... Yet despite merciless flagship for a time, bombing, ceaseless air raids, a symphony of destruction that shatters every river town in sight, Nipponese progress is slow. They can only advance to the tune of blasting broadside. against China's temporary capital. <laughs> to force the Chinese to retreat or be cut off. Landing parties swarm ashore for a flank attack. The invaders occupy Lion Hill, scene of a desperate Chinese stand. The vital Lung High Railroad. To open usual scenes filmed under fire, show the furls a million men into battle. Tanks and guns, the Soviet answer to Japan. By the thousands, new Japanese reinforcements pour into the Tachang salient to cut off the Chinese in Shape and Chenju. Into its second year, Japan... Their light artillery gets the range and starts its hymn of hate. the struggle she has yet to win. From which few return. General Sun Shai Sun. This time the Japanese power drive is past hope. The Chinese troops dig in to sell their lives dearly at Bay Point or in savage suicide for the moment, but the tension remains and may again loose the fury of war on the far eastern front. for advancing infantry. These are new... Su Chow is aflame, blazing target for the invaders' guns. And wide, only ruins and... Chinese defenders, and another daring but this has stuck touch by Japanese shells and the inner native city is put in an assault. <laughs> Battering rams irresistible, Japan's steamroller goes ahead. It's a miracle how anybody lived through this. Steel rail barriers planted in the streets will still halt Japanese tanks and fought. Winning battle after battle, taking town after town, but nature steps in falls. The Japanese vanguard storms the burning city. Fearful of ambush, the Nipponese are set to mop up with a vengeance, but Su Chow, all they find are flaming ruins. Costly to Japan's military machine are such victories as these. Expenditures, five million dollars a day. Casualties, but Hankow is still 135 miles away. Japan's ultra-modern tanks storm an ancient wall town, 32,000 dead, countless wounded. The prize, a city in ashes. Yet Nippon's army rolls on through the walls of Suchop. Nanteo, Shanghai's final burnt offering to as Japanese guns blast a final rain of fire and steel on Nanteo. Long drawn out war in a city's streets nears a raging furious climax at Shanghai. Here Japanese bombers have set fire to a great Chinese flour mill, right opposite the defense lines held by the United States Marines. A night of terrible suspense and fear along the Huangpu waterfront and throughout Shanghai. As China's army retires to new positions, determined to fight to the end against the invader now shouting, Banzai! Oh, 
sails westward. But it has left shut path of China's three-month struggle to keep the Japanese from their once cross revolting picture of ruin and wreckage. Or entire sections knocked flat. A waste where once was teeming life and the Golgotha of China's new freedom. The, bit, the Japanese army, despite strong protests by foreign representatives, stages a victory parade. The entire Japanese population from Hongqiu and other sections waves a wild welcome to the troops who drove the Chinese forces from Shanghai. But the Nipponese army isn't forgetting that bomb on Chinese along the route. Its banks engulfs 2,000 villages and halts the Nipponese by forming an impassable inland sea. China's sorrow becomes Japan's sorrow as the river pours through broken dikes, sparing neither friend nor foe. Both sides stop fighting for the moment to battle the menace of this common enemy. The flight from flood begins. 500,000 refugees are driven from their homes by the rising waters. Heart-rending is the rescue of a lone survivor whose family has been swept away by the swirling current. Safe on the good earth again, but they face a greater suffering. They join the vast army of homeless and hungry. Famine stalks in the wake of flood, the age-old tragedy of ancient China. Here is a picture of human despair, the exodus of those fleeing a land ravaged by war and nature. Day after day, the fury of war sends new hordes from corner to corner, laid the battle lines have swung far from beaten and broken Nantes, seeking safety. War, amid the constant rain of steel, in the momentary chance lulls in the hail of death, the war-shocked population salvages the pitiful remnants of its shattered homes. Death struck even in so-called safe grisly fires throughout the capital where 300,000 people huddled in fear. That man carries the body even to human wrecks. As their dwellings and possessions go up in smoke behind them, an amazing scene of the misery that modern war brings to mankind. But the battle against starvation is just beginning. Several hundred thousand Chinese of all ages here in Shanghai alone face a daily struggle against hunger, a battle for bread that knows no quarter and no armistice, a desperate fight for life. Storm the French concession by the thousand. Feeding this vast army of misery is a task that staggers Shanghai. Too young to know of war, but not too young to suffer. Saved from starvation now by the kind ministrations of the Jesuit seminary in Nankail. Shanghai's ancient Chinese quarter. Food for the mouths in China. <laughs> Typical scenes today in war-torn China, but in many places there are no ministering sisters. In many places there is no food. Not only in broken buildings and war casualties does China's costs mount, Refugees by the hundreds of thousands and war waifs crowd Shanghai. These tots, countless numbers of them, inflamed by the daily air, come train soldiers and fight against the Japanese. Oriental Amazons, ready to die for their native land. Raid killings in their stricken land, these Chinese girls are learning to operate machine guns in the hope that they too can be an impressive sidelight of this undeclared war in the Orient is the formation of Amazon regiments of young Chinese girls. Fired by patriotism for their stricken country, the girls have volunteered for real military duty. 
They are rapidly learning the art of war and are crack shots with a rifle. If they ever get into real front-line action, they'll give a good account of themselves.